Bar crossings are a high risk boating activity, even for the most experienced boating. There are three types of bars. There's dangerous, there's very dangerous, and there's extremely dangerous. Now this film will provide you with information on how to make a safer bar crossing. But if in doubt, don't go out. I'm Matt Collicott. I'm a professional skipper and have been working in and out of harbours around New Zealand for nearly 20 years. The most important part of a skipper's job is to make decisions that will keep everyone safe. Decisions that will ensure that everyone gets home after a good day out. My name's Andrew Gibson and I'm Unit Training Officer at Coast Guard Tyra Pawanui. I've been a member of Coast Guard for three years. During my time here, I've seen firsthand how treacherous the Tyrua Bar can be. I'll be crewing with Matt as we cross the Tyrua Bar. Tyrua is located on the east coast of the Coromandel Peninsula. It's a popular boating destination. The first thing you need to understand is what a bar is and why they can be so dangerous to cross. A bar is a build-up of sand outside the entrance of a river or harbour mouth. Bars are formed and they continually change with the shifts of sand and silt throughout the area. Weather, current and tide conditions over the bar cause waves that break in an unpredictable pattern. This creates an unstable and hazardous environment for even the most experienced boaty. Every bar is different, so it's really important to familiarise yourself with the local features of the bar you're planning to cross. The Tyra Bar is remarkably shallow, with sometimes under two metres of water at low tide. It is relatively short in length, and the risk of crossing is easily underestimated. Some will be tempted to turn south too early and end up in the breaking waves. On the plus side, there are alternative ports at Whangamata and Fidianga if caught outside. Your local Tyra or Pawanui Coast Guard unit is a good source of information and advice. You can get information for Tyra or Pawanui on VHF Channel 86 or contact one of our team. Planning on dry land before you get on the water plays a big part in safety. Preparing to cross the bar always starts at home. You need to check the weather, tides and get local information. Make sure that you have the right equipment and that it's in good condition. Always have a plan B ready just in case the bar or the sea conditions mean it's unsafe to cross. Your plan B could be to go another day, go to a different location, or not go at all. Always check the weather forecast on the day you're planning to head out. There are two key things to look at, wind and swell. This information can be found on a number of websites, including Met Service, or you can get up-to-date information from your local Nowcasting VHF channel. For Tyro, you can check out windguru.co.nz. Niwa also has a camera that displays shots of the Tyro bar every half an hour. It's important to know when the tide times are, both for heading out and coming back across the bar. Plan a timeline for your trip based on the tide times and remember to always avoid bar crossings at night. When going out, as a general rule, the best time to go is any time within three hours before high tide all other times should be avoided. When planning your return across the bar, as a general rule, up to three hours before high tide and one and a half hours after high tide are optimum. All other times should be avoided. Never cross a bar at low tide. Marine Mate is a really good smartphone app for up-to-date tide information. Before you leave, make sure someone knows where you're going and when you'll be back. Next you need to check your boat and equipment. You will need to take with you a life jacket for each person, two forms of waterproof communications, GPS and chart, a bucket or a bilge pump for bailing, an appropriate anchoring system and a backup form of propulsion, for example, oars or a secondary outboard. 
Remember to secure gear and any loose objects. This ensures that they don't become flying missiles when you're out on the water. After checking your equipment, do a thorough boat check. Check your engine, battery and bilge pump are all working well. Make sure that you have enough fuel. Use the third, third, third rule for fuel. Have a third for the trip out, a third for the trip home and a third spare just in case things don't go to plan. Prior to getting to the boat ramp, head to your observation point. Here in Pawanui, the car park right beside the boat ramp gives you a great view of the entire bar. Turn on the VHF to your local now casting channel. Here in Tairua, channel 23. This is to double check the conditions and confirm whether they are likely to change during the day. This will also give you the up-to-date bar status. A bar status of normal means your bar crossing can be undertaken with all the usual care and planning. A status of marginal means the bar must be navigated with extreme caution. If the bar status is not recommended, this means bar crossing is hazardous and you should not cross the bar. At the boat ramp, make sure all your gear is still secure. Double check your fuel and make sure your breathers are open. And of course, don't forget to put your bung in. Go over your safety equipment. Let everybody know where it is and how to use it. Making sure somebody on board knows how to use all the safety equipment is great backup, just in case something happens to you as a skipper. Get everyone to put on their life jackets. Inflatable life jackets are great. However, full life jackets are much better for crossing a bar. It's a really good idea to run your engine for at least 10 minutes prior to even crossing the bar. Because the boat ramp is just around the corner, it's a good idea to have a run around the harbour for a few minutes to warm your engine. Once you're underway, do a trip report with the Coast Guard. Head out the entrance through the joggles to the starboard marker. This is your safe assessment point. Use your throttle to maintain your position. There's a lot of current in this area. This is the last opportunity you will have to safely turn around if the bar looks too unsafe to cross. We're at a point now where we can assess the bar. First I'm looking for obstacles in or on the water. Things like kite surfers, fishermen, other vessels, logs, buoys or beacons. Now I'm going to watch the waves. Waves will come in sets. Our assessment of the Tyrell bar could even take up to 20 minutes. So we've been here for about 10 to 15 minutes and we've had a really, really good look. A bar with a breaking wave or white water across the entire channel should never be crossed in an open boat. Once you've made your assessment and decided to cross the bar, do a bar watch report with Coast Guard. Identify the channel, choose the calmest place to cross and always avoid breaking waves. Identify any local channel markers. Tyrua has a set of leading lights. During the day, these are depicted as two large white triangles. These are located in the area of the Pawanui car park. To safely navigate your vessel across the bar, you need to align the two triangles so that one is directly above the other. In reduced visibility, the leading lights will be indicated by two red lights. Again, you need to align one on top of the other. A large red and white safe water mark represents the approximate line to follow and indicates that you have safely crossed the bar. Brief your crew on what's going on. Tell them where to stand, make sure they hold on. Tell them to stay in the same place as people moving around your vessel will create instability. Make sure everyone has three points of contact. If you're waiting, watch other vessels cross the bar, but do not assume they know what they're doing. Only one boat should cross the bar at any time. Watch for a lull in the waves. Once you have committed to crossing the bar, you are committed. Never turn around on a bar. If you turn around on a bar, a wave can hit you side on, which can easily capsize any vessel. Approach the wave straight on. Proceed with enough speed to make safe headway. Slow down as you reach the wave, but make sure you have enough momentum to carry you to the top of the wave, so you can gently come off the back of it.
One of the most common mistakes made when crossing the bar is exiting the channel of the bar too soon. Exiting too early will mean that you could be caught side on by a wave. You will know when you have safely crossed the bar because the water will tend to become deeper and calmer and watch for your safe water boy. It is a good idea to enter a GPS waypoint here so that you can use this mark as your safe assessment point when returning back across the bar. Close your bar watch report when you have safely completed your crossing. When returning across the bar, go back to that GPS waypoint or safe water buoy and watch the bar. Before committing to returning back across the bar, you need to ask yourself, are the conditions safe? Is the tide suitable? If the bar is unsafe to return across, or if you are unsure, wait or use your plan B. A good plan B for Tairua is to head south down to Whangamata, or you could head north to Furianga. Again, secure all loose objects and remind your crew to hold on and stay in the same place while crossing. Assess the waves. Head to the red and white safe water mark to make your assessment prior to returning across the bar. Again, line up the two white triangles, one on top of the other, and follow that line in. Once you've reached the green starboard marker on the rocks at the base of Paku Hill, you can safely turn and head into the harbour. Pick a wave to cross the bar. You need to stick with one wave, no fooling around with any other waves. Stay focused on what's ahead. One of your crew can keep a lookout behind to let you know if the wave behind you is catching up with you. If you don't stay with the wave you've chosen, your boat will fall behind, risking the next wave catching up with you and capsizing your vessel. Ensure you proceed straight on at an adequate speed. You will know when you have safely crossed the bar because the water will tend to become calmer and you are back in safe, calm water. Remember to close your trip report with Coast Guard when you're safely back at the boat ramp. Now you've learnt some really useful tools to help you safely navigate your vessel across the Tairua Bar. Never attempt bar crossings without knowledge and experience. Always head out with someone who is experienced and knows what they're doing before attempting any bar crossing. Remember, always approach bar crossing with the right attitude of caution. If at any point the conditions or your checklist don't add up, postpone your trip for another time or day, or choose to go boating somewhere else. As the skipper, you are responsible for everyone's safety. You need to make sure you can get everyone home safely after your trip out on the water. Respect the bar, and if in doubt, don't go out. <laughs>